My name is Brian Mallow, and I'm a science comedian. My next guest is a very funny guy. He's from San Francisco. Please welcome Brian Mallow, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Planet Theater. This Brian awesome Mallow. Glow- Brian Mallow. I'm back here with Brian Mallow. Please join me in welcoming to Distinctive Voices, Brian Mallow and the Final Frontier. Brian Mallow? Uh, love him. To, in fact, his Twitter handle is Science Comedian. What is a science comedian? Well, you know what a political comedian is. I noticed some time ago, whenever my mom would lose weight, my dad would gain weight. And when my dad lost weight, my mom gained weight. It was like the conservation of mass within our family. I'm not bald. I have hair. It's just outside your visible spectrum. In fact, the first time I saw her, I thought she was farther away than she actually was. A virus walks into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve viruses in this bar. The virus replaces the bartender and says, now we do. You can make me go to my room, but you can't make me go to sleep. Which probably would have been true, except my dad was an anesthesiologist. I had a kind of frightening experience. I noticed in the display case behind me, someone had put pasta and antipasta right next to each other. Look at what a great mom she is. Look at her really clutching that egg. She's got a good hold on that egg case. You will not take my eggs. I think mothers have been telling their kids to stand up straight for longer than we realize. Perhaps even to pre-human days. What if that were the driving force behind the evolutionary trend to walk erect? Right? Mothers nagging their children up the evolutionary ladder. Stand up straight. Don't drag your knuckles when you walk. What do you have against Pluto? Cold, distant. I don't want to be in a plutonic relationship. That's okay, groaning is acceptable. You're telling me this is a civilization that never named their basic unit of time? Two bacteria walk into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve bacteria in this bar. The bacteria say, but we work here. We're staff. You know, these are all peer-reviewed jokes, by the way. Once I defined myself as a science comedian, that did pave the way to communicating science in other ways. And you left me a little present. Whether stage, video, or helping scientists be better uh, presenters. I'm at Moffett Field in Mountain View, California, home of NASA Ames Research Center. And interestingly, it's also home of Eureka, America's only Zeppelin. Oh, there she oh. is, Brian. Wow. Can you see it? As far as helium experiences go, Flying in a Zeppelin is hard to beat. The power of helium. Everything is gold. On February 20th, 1962, in his Mercury capsule, high atop a mighty Atlas rocket, John Glenn was blasted into space at 17,500 miles per hour. What if I told you that's almost five miles per second? And that means if you were in space and the ISS went by, In one second, it would be five miles away. What I really like about the planets and the study of the solar system is you can actually go to these places. I'm here with Harrison Smith, who was the 12th and final human to walk on the moon. Everywhere we've gone, we left a bunch of stuff on the moon, we left stuff on Venus, Uh, we've got stuff crawling around Mars right now. Just that experience of standing Well, we we were an exceptionally beautiful place. Uh, Certainly not, (laughs) didn't seem desolate to me. There's some stuff that we have flung out into the galaxy with no destination in mind. (laughs) The sky was black and the sun was bright and the earth was a beautiful blue and white object in the uh, southwestern uh, horizon. So it was just a remarkable opportunity and a great honor to be there. Only a a handful of countries in the world have have achieved orbit and that's like the whole country kind of (laughs) doing it, you know. They have contracts to carry cargo and ultimately astronauts to and from the space station so that NASA can focus on what it does best exploring and conquering frontiers. Life has to be about more than just solving problems. You've you got to have you know, reasons to be inspired and say, you know, excited about life. And I think space exploration is definitely one of, those, one of those things. I was born during the space race, though I didn't know it at the time, with colorful mobiles dangling just out of reach. Is it any wonder we long to touch the sky? We're confined to cribs that we're expected to outgrow, and we're programmed from day one to go, go, go just as soon as we learned to negotiate a gravity field. By the time I was four, there was a rocket on my birthday cake and I wanted to be an astronaut, or Batman, 
I'm not sure I knew the difference. This is where the astronauts will sleep when they are at the Kennedy Space Center. In February, I flew to Florida with my girlfriend, Tara, to see the final launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. It was a long way from San Francisco, but we'd never seen a launch and we were both very excited. <laughs> we're going to space! For me, it was the culmination, the consummation, of a lifelong relationship with space. <laughs> I remember the night everyone on our street came outside to see Skylab pass over Houston. And the afternoon we looked up and saw the Enterprise. No, not that Enterprise. The first space shuttle Enterprise, piggybacked on a 747. If I can make you laugh, maybe that'll make you more open-minded to the subject, and maybe it'll make it more memorable. When you hear the name Galileo, what do you think of? An Italian guy dropping stuff off the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Or maybe Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Galileo! 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 We are all on a first name basis with him, like Elvis and Oprah. Schrodinger's cat walks into a bar and doesn't. <laughs> I want you to come back to America with me. <laughs> Some people think science is boring. And astrophysics, so esoteric and irrelevant to our lives here on Earth. Is the sun boring? It's a million times bigger than the Earth. It squeezes hydrogen atoms into helium atoms, and the little bit of leftover energy powers almost everything on Earth. We have streaming video in the palm of your hand, wirelessly, thanks to, in part to networks of satellites, tiny points of light that we placed in the sky. I'm not done yet. Lasers are just cool. All of this incredible technology, indistinguishable from magic. Do we just keep, you know, dodging bullets here or what? Well, I guess you could say yes. I mean, it is inevitable that something like this is gonna happen. Things hit the earth uh, constantly. Every time you see a shooting star, there are things that are actual dangers out there. Poisonous plants, poisonous frogs. We change our behavior as we get older. Like, I noticed my wife has started dressing in bright colors to trick predators into thinking she's poisonous. <laughs> Flying cow, very appropriate. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How do you think that cherry got embedded in the whipped cream? <laughs> in case of a tornado, should you hurry up and finish your ice cream? <laughs> That's true. Isaac Newton once said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. I love that. It's astonishing that of all people, Isaac, Isaac Newton, Newton, inventor of gravity, <laughs> believed in giants. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. You know, you're not, you say you're not a professor. You, 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 you certainly come off as a very, a very good one. Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate it. For Time Video, I'm Brian Mallow. For Time Video, I'm Brian Mallow. He is the origin of this next joke. A Higgs boson walks into a church. The priest said, I'm sorry, we don't allow Higgs bosons in church. And the Higgs boson said, Excuse me, but without me, you can't have mass. Ooh. <laughs>